Now, technically speaking, this is a tree in a pot. You know, bonsai by translation of the literal meaning tree in a pot, but it's not really a bonsai. What makes it a bonsai is its resemblance to a big tree on a small scale. This looks like a bush, very healthy tree, very strong tree, uh, but it is not very easy to figure out how we create this into a bonsai. I know you brought this for a workshop and you brought it as a challenge to me. So what did you have in mind, PJ, for this tree? What what did you think? <coughs> I have her? no idea. I'll, <laughs> I'll, no I'll, idea. I'll take you to the magician and see what I can do with it. <laughs> okay. Now, there are several ways of treating this tree. I could simply, do I have free hand? But mind you, I don't give refunds. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool. Now, it's obviously too big. So I think the lesson that comes from it will be priceless. If I simply cut it back in a triangular shape, in a triangular shape you have clearly watched all my YouTube videos. Simply cutting back into a triangular shape is the first step to making this look like a bonsai. Now, one would be tempted to say that all this growth, what have we grown it for? Is it being wasted? No, nothing is ever wasted because while the tree is growing healthy like this, we've made the tree strong. We've created a very strong thick trunk because had it not grown strong like this, it would not have developed a trunk as nice as this. But when it comes to making a bonsai, we don't need all this. It's done its work. <laughs> all the leaves have fed the tree and made it a very healthy looking tree. But we can't leave it like this to be a bonsai because this is not how we envisage a bonsai to be. So. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cuttings. Although it's a bit late, you can still try. If anyone wants to know how to make cuttings, I'll explain to you after I've done this. Because we can propagate from cuttings quite easily from maples. Fortunately, I don't need a ladder. Back in the 60s and 70s, when bonsai was in its infancy, there were a lot of people, both commercial people and the amateurs, all they ever did was prune it in a bush shape like this and put it in a pie dish or something and call it a bonsai. And a lot of people thought they were very nice looking. Well, that's one way of looking at it, but bonsai has developed a lot since then. So, you must admit, it looks different now, mm, doesn't it? Very. Just doing this, and if you put it in a nice big bonsai pot, you get away with it. But when it comes to bonsai, there is much more to bonsai than just that. The trunk is the most important thing of a bonsai. It's like the human body. If you have a beautiful body on a trunk, that is, that's what defines the bonsai. You look at this tree. <laughs> what is beautiful about that? It's the trunk there which is beautiful. So with this, it's the trunk which is nice. You could get away with, if you're not very fussy, and want a full tree, put it in a bonsai pot, it will look like a tree. But when it comes to the classical shapes in bonsai, this fork here is what we call a fault. We can make a twin trunk tree. There are many bonsai here which have two trunks. But when you have a twin trunk, it starts from quite low in the pot by convention. But that is only convention. If you like a full tree, I would leave it. But if you want to be purist and want a single trunk tree, single line, you would need to do more than that. I would then 
consider this to be the trunk. Just this bit. Forget the back bit. Cut it back there. And this is your trunk. We're probably here. Cut everything off and you'll just get a little stick like that. I don't think you would be very happy with that. <laughs> that is being absolute purist. I think uh, I think I Your wife would kill you. <laughs> no, no, not really. I know. I think I got it because I actually like the twin trunk. Okay. I appreciate right. what you're saying now. I know that. That it should be okay. further down. Understand I respect that. everyone's I just opinion. thought... Uh, yes. You could air that. Absolutely. That you you could air the back. Yeah. yeah. But let's not go down route. I am... No, I think that looks... Amazing. Yeah, okay, just doing this looks more like a bonsai. So if you want to have a full tree, then let us up, uh, do it that way. Okay, if you want that, then we will analyze the tree and see where there are certain improvements to be made. I don't like to call them faults. They are just improvements. Like this branch here, this branch here is crossing there. You see? I would get it. Can you see it? This one coming back on itself. So because it's crossing, I get rid of it. I take decisions very fast. <laughs> I do take decisions fast. Okay, I got rid of that. Okay, and now this one is crossing as well. Can you see this one? Get rid of that. This one's coming back on itself. That's going to the back there. Also, this is a funny branch like that doing that. Don't do that. Get rid of that. Now the one which is crossing is this one. Don't worry, you still have some tree left. <laughs> See, it's thinned it out a bit now. You can cut as much as you like off, I don't mind. No, no, no. <laughs> It'll grow back. Sorry. It's right, man. And this is usually what we call a sacrificial branch, although it's low. By having branches low at the bottom, it feeds back into the tree and makes the trunk swell at that part. So this is a sacrificial. Keep it and it will help to thicken the trunk faster. If you removed it, the trunk will not thicken as fast. So that is why I left that. Now. How long did that take? If I had not been speaking, I would have done it in three minutes. Are you happy with that? If you put it in a large bonsai pot, we have some very large ones you may have seen. To be absolutely safe, what you should do is probably wait till February when you can take it out and really tease the roots and rearrange it and cut it. But if you are impatient, you can put it in a pot like this or a pot like this and you would get almost an instant looking bonsai. When it is eventually made into a bonsai, the pot doesn't need to be so big. It can be about this long and wide, but it can be only about this deep. So you can get it down to here. So just by pruning, you see we've got a very reasonable looking tree. Not a perfect bonsai. I respect the owner's choice of keeping the twin trunk, but it still looks tree-like. So let's keep it like this. And there you are. Are you happy with this yeah, solution? Yeah. Okay. It. So it's you to choose whether you want to put it in the pot now or be a bit patient, wait till February and put it in this pot. There's more chance of it succeeding. Meanwhile, if you Are just you put some fertilizer... Are <coughs> saying if it goes in here? It it's okay. It's okay. okay. We can still do that. I won't cut much root, yeah. but it will still be okay. But ideally, you should wait till February and do it. Okay. But I've shown you the pruning. Okay, so that's that tree. Can you tell us about the history, the history of this tree? Um, I've had it 35 years. Yeah. Um, it came from a rock base in the south of France. You actually dug it out? I pulled it out. And how thick was the tree when you got it out? It's probably grown a third. So about it. finger thick? 
No, it's a lot thicker than that. Thicker than that. Yeah. Okay, you did well. So that is what we call collecting from the world. Uh, people sometimes still do it, but now people are so conscious about the environment. Yeah. They don't like to take trees from the wild unless you have the owner's permission or whatever. But most of these wild trees, you can see why people are so fond of getting trees from the wild because you get these beautiful uh, gnarled trunks and they're growing completely natural. So pines like this, which are shaped by nature in effect, are very charming in their own special way. And I believe you've never done any wiring to this tree. There's an odd piece of wire on the on one or two branches that I thought I'd try. Other than that, it's had no work done. Okay. I, now I grew it a couple of times. Okay. Most people would regard this as a bonsai, but again, I'm not saying it's not a bonsai, but you can improve it. And for those who are, you know, more sophisticated in bonsai would look at the tree differently. For a start, because these mountain pines tend to creep and crawl uh, on the mountainside, it's growing low. But you see what I did just now, I just propped it up to change the angle. I changed the angle by about 20 degrees. So rather than look at the tree like this, where you can't see the trunk, remember what I said to you about the trunk. The trunk is what defines a bonsai. If it doesn't have an interesting trunk, it's not an interesting tree. And if it has an interesting trunk, why do you want to hide it? So I want to show the trunk more. And to show the trunk more, the tree should be planted like this. Agreed? Mm -hmm. You can see the trunk much better. So that is your trunk line. But with most of the so-called collected trees, there are different possibilities. If I want it to be really radical, I could get rid of 90% of the tree. This is a famous bag trick. So I'm just showing you the possibilities. If I wanted to make a small bonsai and just have that bit, can you see? Oh, yes, yes. See, that would make such a cute bonsai. Look at that. Just that bit with a lovely thick trunk. I'm just trying to show you how your mindset should work mm. when you approach bonsai. Mm. It is all about a mindset. Mm. We always say that bonsai is interesting, it's like a problem-solving exercise. One of the other activities we have, we have large corporates that send their staff for staff bonding day. <laughs> and one of my clients does bonsai seriously. And he brings them here because it's a problem-solving exercise. Every tree is like a problem. And like all problems, there is never just one solution. There's always more than one solution. It could be two, three solutions. So what I showed you just now is one solution to this tree, making it like that, okay, just that. The other more obvious solution is to follow this trunk line. Can you see? Pull this up a little more so you get the traditional S shape. Hmm? So that is one solution, and then this would come this way. Another solution, if you want it to be even more radical, is to have the classic cascade style, in which you make this branch cascading down, and then this part coming up. And that would take, I think, about two or three days to do. I couldn't do it in two hours. We would do it like this, and put it in one of these tall pots, you know, those mm. tall pots cascading down. So there are many possibilities to this tree. And because it's such an interesting tree, don't rush into it. You know, take your time to decide what you want to do. It is too nice a tree to waste. The cascade solution would be very nice because you would have this as the branch. Let me uh, show you this a viral here. So that trunk would come down, I think. So that's the cascade style, you know, coming down like that. 
Mm. So this trunk is going to be like this and this is going to be bent down and that is going to be the top. And then we will probably have to sacrifice that unfortunately. So those are the options you have. Would you it have... bleed? Hmm? If you cut it? Yeah, no. It, it seals itself. It seals okay. itself. This is a driftwood. It's a bit yeah. too long. This piece of driftwood is a bit too long. Uh, so it's going to come down. So that's going to be cascading. I like that branch. idea very much. So if mm. you want to cut now, you could cut. No, it, oh. I couldn't do it in one days. day. It oh, would no. take it would take some weeks to do. Oh, it would take a lot of time to do, and unless you're competent to do it yourself, I wouldn't waste this tree. I would take time to do it. Uh, it's, it's a strong tree, but it would be a shame to do it all in one afternoon. It won't. I can't do it in one afternoon. There's a lot. Some of these trunks have to be split. Because sometimes when you get a very thick trunk, uh, you may have seen on some of my videos, uh, you can split a trunk and bend it, you know, make it like plywood. So a thick branch will be split into two parts so that it becomes easier to bend. So that is the option. The beauty of this tree is that it's very healthy, very, very healthy tree. So uh, whatever you do won't damage the tree it won't die you've got a nice branch for a head nice one going it's down there, it? it's, it's all there it's, it's all there but it takes a long time to do so this is a very beautiful piece of material very beautiful piece of material so you can see the options you have uh, many options for this tree i think this back side this is the back is <coughs> so interesting but even as an ordinary tree is interesting but so this, lots of long-term work and lots of heavy, heavy wiring to take that down like that, and then this coming up like that uh, would be interesting. I think it is worth bringing, even just to do a YouTube video. In one day, I could probably do the bulk of the work, but that is what this tree presents as potential, lots of potential. But unfortunately, within the space of an hour and a half, we will not be able to do it. Now, these 49 pound pines, these trees are all about 10 years old. Very interesting tree. And they are better than the Japanese white pine. The Japanese white pine is quite a temperamental tree. So, these are European type pines. Now, don't worry about the needles. By plucking the needles, you will get more back budding. And I'm clearing the needles because I want to show the trunk. Remember that showing the trunk is the single most important thing in creating a bonsai. Remember the trunk. The trunk line is the most important thing. Once you get a nice trunk line, then it becomes an interesting bonsai. I can guarantee you that these are very healthy trees. Look at all that beautiful root. We buy them small and grow them on. There's a nursery that grows them for us. And look at that beautiful trunk underneath here. And this is just a peat type soil. And the tree is growing really strong. Those of you who watch my YouTube videos know that my approach to do in bonsai, I know that with experience, you get the courage to do things. And for most people, they find it hard to decide what to cut, isn't it? Yeah? Now, this tree, the base starts there, but I won't need all of that tree. And if I do a cut, you may gasp, but you got to be a bit bold. Now let me just prop it up in one of these flower pots so that I get a better angle for the trees. <coughs> Remember that you have an angular shape, nice trunk line, it becomes interesting as a bonsai. So I think I've given the game away by saying that I have to cut. So with this tree, can you see this line here? Mm -hmm. You got to think laterally. I, all right, I can make it a tall tree by wiring all the branches, okay? 
I can do that and get a nice tree that way. And take the growing tip off. You don't want it to keep growing towards the sky. If I just do that, I would get a very nice bonsai by wiring. But I think I can also get a very interesting tree by cutting that off. If I haven't done anything else but to show you how to think when you make bonsai, I will have achieved something today for you. See, this is called our bag trick. If I do that and cut that off, can you see how interesting the trunk line is? Can you all see? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Can you see? Mm. Yes. Yeah. So I've got an interesting trunk line by cutting that off. So don't be afraid, you see? I'm cutting off about one third of the tree. Shall I do that? Yes. Anyway, if you don't like it, you can take another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut that off. <laughs> okay, so. It's great fun, you know. <laughs> okay, these small things, we probably don't need them. This is the same type as this, these are new goals. This tree, I would reckon, is about 50 or 60 years old. You can tell by the bark. Without doing anything, already it looks like a bonsai. I haven't even wired it. I haven't even wired it. Okay, so that's how you look at the tree. Let's improve it a little bit by wiring. I know I can get you to do it. You want to do it or shall I do it? I eat, eat. <laughs> <laughs> You can practice on another one, but you can have this one when I finish it. So don't forget the principle of the two branch principle wiring two branches with one piece of wire every time. We always say that there's no real difference between the size of the tree, whether you work on a small tree or a big tree, the work is the same, it's just that you've got more of it to do. So you've done your yew tree bonsai or large tree bonsai, this is no different. You're going to use exactly the same principles, just simple wiring. And then we will wash some more. Okay. If you don't want the wire to mark, then I think in about a year's time, it should set the branches. So it doesn't need to be put too tight. After all, we're not wiring this for an exhibition. We're just wiring it to give it the basic shape. That's okay. Mm. I'll leave it for a while, John. And I can assure you that a lot of these Mugo pines, when they are done well, they are better than some of the Japanese white pines of the same size, and they're much hardier. They make beautiful little bonsai. If you work fast and do what I've done just now, it should probably take you 
no more than half an hour to complete a tree like this. So that's the basic shape. And all we've done is remove that single branch. Where's that branch gone? Oh, yeah. That's all we removed. And you see the shape? Some of the upward pointing ones we can get rid of. And then you can prune the ends. As I said with the pines, you just prune the candles off or you prune the tips off, it will bud back. Budding back means that you'll get new shoots like this further back into the trunk. Mm -hmm. So how easy is that? Hmm? And at this time of the year, because this tree has got such a lot of roots, we can put it in a training pot, a plastic bonsai pot would do, quite deep. And then you've got a very nice little tree like that. Okay. So if that gives you ideas as to what you can do. So these things you can buy in garden centers as well. And uh, you can make nice bonsai from that. Okay. Now that tree, you what I can, we can improve that. All bonsai never stand still. As they grow, they tend to lose the shape and you can improve the shape. This is a Chinese larch. And again, this is what we call commercial bonsai, where it's just grown in a bush without any regard to the shape and form, but you can improve it. So if you want it to be really meticulous, See that that branch really shouldn't be there. A lot of these sometimes they're dead. The tip of that too many things there. So it's just grown in a bushy sort of way. It's not what we would call a classic bonsai. That is getting too too thick. Might lose the shape of that tree. So it's going upwards there. a lot of daddy stuff so they just chop the tree and let it grow bushy but to make it more classical you can do some more wiring as it grows but just keep it that nice conical shape there are no pretenses to make this a classical bonsai it's not meant to be like that and uh, just keep chipping away do the odd bit of pruning so that's how you would look after this tree so as it's not a classical tree, but you can improve it slightly. Uh, if you wanted to really make it classical, then there are too many leaders here. You see this, this leader, that leader, that can be confusing. Usually when we create a bonsai, it has one leader, one single growing tip like this, you see. So if, it, if you wanted to make a classical bonsai, then you have to deal with that leader somehow. You probably have to cut that bit off, see, and just leave that to grow as a leader and then retrain the tree. But if you do that, you'll have to wait very long for the branches to grow again. So if you're just happy with a nice bushy tree, then just leave it like that and enjoy it. So this is my approach to bonsai. I don't insist that people take it to the classical extremes where you have to wait years. If you have a nice looking tree and you enjoy it, that's what matters. A few crossing branches don't matter, you know. Who is there to look? Crossing Only you're enjoying the tree. Crossing okay, branches. just keep it well watered. Don't let it dry out. This is a Chinese larch, as opposed to our Japanese <coughs> larch, which we did today. But they're quite nice trees.